Great to see you here today and thank you so much for joining us as part of Positive Aging Week 2020. For our viewers at home, um, would you just introduce yourself and give a little bit of background to what you do and what you're going to talk about here today. Right, my name is Noel Hennessy and I'm with uh, Tipperary County Council in the housing section. Now as you're aware, how the council does a lot of work in various areas in the likes of planning, roads, um, environment, that sort of thing, and housing where I'm involved. Now the housing has a couple of different sections, providing housing, construction housing, and a big part of our, our uh, work is, um, ad, ad, well, it's the admin and it's assessing disabled persons' grants. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. Okay, so what are some of the grants that, that people can apply for, I suppose, is the best way to start? Now, there's three basic grants. You have the major grant, which is the house adaption. Okay. We'll go through that in little detail. Okay. Then we have the mobility aids grant and then especially we have the aid for the elderly. Okay. So will we start a little bit then, as you said, with the three there? Should we yeah. start just with the first one, the, the adaptation grant? What, what is that and what does that involve? Now, the adaptation grant is if, it's, if there's major works required in your house. Okay. Now, for example, you could have a two-storey house. Your, all your bedrooms are upstairs. Your bathroom is upstairs. But you cannot access them or use them. You don't have any room downstairs to do anything about it, to convert a room. So now in that instance, you're probably looking to build an extension. The extension consisting of a bedroom and um, an ensuite, a wet room ensuite, which can be constructed. And you'll get a maximum grant of that of 30,000. Okay. Now, there is a little difference on the grant figures based on the income coming into the house, but that's the max of the grant. Now, that's just one example. There, there is other examples of what you can do under that, under that. scheme. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the mobility aid grant as well. Again, I know we just were yeah. dipping into them yeah. just slightly, but what are mobility some of those? Aids. Now, the mobility aids grant has a maximum of 6,000. And we will use that for the, the lesser cost, costly jobs. For example, maybe a little ramp at a door. We might be able to convert a, an existing bathroom if the works aren't major. We can also very importantly do a stair lift, provided the stairs is straight. And I'll explain that to you in a little bit more detail later, okay? Okay, okay, so I need a straight stairs, I'm interested. And then I suppose because we're on, on Positive Aging Week and we're looking at our, our older generation, Housing Aid for Older People's Grant, could we look a little at that in a bit more detail maybe? We can indeed, yeah. So there's three main areas with that, it's, it's roof, either repair or totally replace its electrics and that may involve a complete rewire of the house and uh, windows and doors. Now windows and doors is a slight little nightmare at the minute but uh, it, 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 the department have certain um, regulations put, put into place which we have to abide by. So for example double glaze, if you have existing double glaze and you just might feel like changing them, you're not going to get it. We're after really the old single glaze, either wooden, aluminium, it doesn't matter as once they're single glaze, in bad condition. Then we can replace them. Now, the big thing with that is there's a maximum of four and a half thousand is all we can spend. Okay. The grant is an eight thousand euro max, but the department have set a figure of four and a half thousand okay. on, on the max you can spend on windows and doors. Now, there's another little part about windows and doors and for the old people. It's not, writ, it's not wrote anywhere, you won't find it in a checklist, but I had a particular uh, little old lady in um, a, a town and she, all she wanted was a door and a window. Now, they weren't too bad, but when I called out to her, you could see by her that she was living a kind of nearly in terror. Someone had attempted to break into the house, didn't succeed, thankfully, but for three months, she never slept a full night because she was always worried, okay? We fitted our door, we fitted our window, we, we covered all our boxes, but the biggest thing we gave that little lady was security in her own house and now change her life around. So that's important. You must read the, the hidden little things when, you, when we do call out. Okay, so do you actually call out then to, to look at what's to be done? We do. It's a little bit difficult at the minute because of COVID reasons, but we do. We will call out. Now, for a, a stair lift, 
for any of the grants, number one, you will need a doctor cert unless it's eight for the elderly. Okay, that's a slightly different thing. But for the other grants, you need a doctor cert. For major works like an extension, a major exchange of some room in the house or a stair lift, you will also need an occupational therapist report as well. Okay. But we still call out, and my main job and my colleague's job is, doctor wants A, an OT wants A, can we fit A into the house structurally? And that's what I'll decide. Now, sometimes when we call out, it may not be workable. So we will suggest and we will come up with something to fit the house in, in, in union with the, the, the applicant. I mean, it's their home, they're the important person. So you must deal with the person and what their particular needs is. And what fits your house, the same house down the road, it may not fit different person. So vital that you give us that sort of information when we do call out. And I suppose it gives the person reassurance that in actual fact you're hearing exactly what their needs are and you're going to do your best exactly. to help them. Yeah. Now I know it's a little uh, problem some at times for older people, especially when there's a male calling into the house. I had one, uh, we learn as we go along, okay, called into an elderly lady and um, she needed a wet room constructed in her house, fine. Funny type of design house, of course, as we all know, a lot of our houses designed in Ireland is designed brutally. They never allowed for someone being sick or getting old. And there was a kind of a long hallway, and at the back of it, this is going to sound awful, there was an outside shed inside nearly. It is a funny sort. Ideal for conversion to a, to a wet room, lovely sizes. So I went through it, told the lady, this is what we'll do, perfect, grand. But when I left that house, there was something bothering me. Something didn't feel right, but I checked. I had done everything by the book. I had looked at the checklist. Everything was, was grand. Funny enough, two weeks later, different house, exact same designer house. Again, an elderly lady. I said, no bother, sir. No, he walks in. There's nothing to do. And he will fit A to B. And she let me speak away. When I was finished, she said, no, that's not going to work. And I said, why? She said, that's actually too far away from me. If I need to go to the toilet, I'm not going to reach it in time. Grand. I said, that's no problem. We can now do something different and fine. That's all she had to say to me. So then the penny dropped. So I then rang my first lady and I said, by the way, um, if we put the toilet where I said we were going to put it, is that too far away from you? And she said, yes, it is. So we changed it. Now, I can understand her being a little embarrassed to tell me that maybe there was a little incontinent problem or whatever it was, but you don't, I, I don't want details. That's all she had to say, that's a little bit too far away from me. Fine, we'll sort it out. Likewise, sometimes if I've done a bathroom downstairs, I may want to put a toilet and a hand sink upstairs because the person may need to go to the toilet or the bathroom five or six times during the night. Stair lift or no stair lift, you can't be up and down and you need to reach it in time. So we'll give a toilet upstairs. Don't be shy to ask. So I suppose what I'm learning is that thing of if, if I'm coming to you for a grant, I don't have to give you why I need something no. here, but, but maybe yeah. there's a way around it way around, and, yeah. a, and ask you yeah. the question. And sometimes the doctor may have that indicated or the OT may have that indicated, but in this case, no one had indicated. And unless I tell you, you're not and going to know. Tell me. And again, we are not looking for private or embarrassing information, a general picture that this will work for me or this won't. Look, we're seeing it every day, we're used to it. It's confidential. Whatever you tell me in your house stays in your house, doesn't go anywhere else. And that's very reassuring yeah. for people to, to know. When I'm going for the, the, the grant, is it that I own the house? What way does it work, say, when I come to you? Now, of course, it's three things really. Basically, you own the house yourself. It may be another family member may have a share in it or actually may own it. Or indeed, it may be a long-term rented house. Okay, your own house, no problems. Another family member has a share or owns the house. We just need a declaration for them that you can go do the works. Again, with a long-term lease, we need a note from the landlord to say, I am happy to let you proceed with these works. Our, our, our aim is to look after the person. Really, we don't, you know, that's because for every job, every grant we do, Hopefully, and we're keeping someone out of residential care. And that's the big design of these disabled persons grants. 
So it, it's about helping a person to live in their own home. Live in their own home. And of course, as you well know, everyone is much happier in their own home. They'll even get better if that's the case in their own home quicker. And in, look, in some cases, sadly, there may be a terminal illness or something. If it's a year, if it's two years, let them have the best quality of life they possibly can in that space of time. And that's what our job is to do. And the change we can bring on people by the fact of some little uh, major works or even small works. I, we, done, uh, we rewired a, a house for an old lady in Ross Gray. I met her son after and he said I had given her another 10 years of life. And I said, why? He said, she was so worried that this house is going to burn down on top of her some night because of the wire. So the little jobs are black and white, but they can have a huge knock-on effect as well to people's well-being. And that's fierce important, you know. It, it, to feel heard and understood and feel safe. And feel safe. safe. So you said there about that, say the house, the lady was worried that the house would, could burn down because of the wiring, I think you yes. said. So you, I know you give a, a little bit of a list. You said roof, electrics, uh, windows and doors. So tell me, can I ask a little bit about the roof and the electrics? How is that covered, we'll say, or in No, the roof, obviously, I will make the call, or my colleagues will make the call on the roof. If it's repairable, will allow for the cost of the repairs. If it's not, it's probably a re-roof. So the person then just gets a competent contractor to give us a quote, okay? Now, sorry, I should have also added in, we can do heating there as well, okay? Electrics and heating, we will need, for example, electrics, we will need something from a registered electrician to say why the house needs rewiring. Equally, if the, the heating system is in, a, in dire straits, we will need something from a um, central heating contractor explaining to us why it needs replacing or repairing. And that's fine, we can go with that then. Okay, so I, I suppose then the, the next part that's coming to my mind is, is be open and honest with you about what I need, like the lady with the bathroom, uh, but also my heating or whatever. Let me get my quotes, be, go to somebody reputable and come to you and say, look, this is the reality yes, of what needs yes. to be done. Am I looking for charity if I come to you? No, and it's a huge issue with the older people the first thing they'll tell you is, I worked hard all my life, I paid for everything, I never got anything or looked for anything. It is not charity. I'm going to say that again, it's not charity. It's an entitlement. Every citizen in this country has that entitlement. It's, if it's for the aid for the elderly, it's your age. Once you're 66 or over, the other two grants if you have a disability. But definitely it's not charity. Okay. And, you know, you mentioned the stair lift earlier on. Mm. And you said to me that um, there's, there's a stair lift that sort of goes straight up. Then you said when we were chatting before we mm. came on camera about uh, like a, a shaped stair lift. Is there a bit of a difference in, in applying for that and what I do? You know, for example, a straight stair lift, your stairs straight up. Average price about that is uh, around €2,000. OK, we can do that then under the Mobility AIDS Grant because that has a max, that has a ceiling of 6,000. If there's a major turn or anything on it, it still can be done, there's no problems, but now your pricing can go from 6,000 and over it. So again, we would put that then into the, 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 the Disabled Persons Grant, the House Adaption Grant. That's for, so we'll do our best to make sure the person is covered financially at all possible. I said, there is slightly differences, we're not going to confuse too much, based on the income coming into your house. And you can start at 95% or, and down, it's, it's a pro-rata scale. Okay. Have I got the, the right end of the stick here? I may be able to come from, uh, for a grant based on one section of your, your, your three grants, your grants, your adaptation or your mobility aids grant, or I may fit in under one of the others, say the, the housing aid for, for older people. Yes. It may come in under one of the others to get one little piece done in my house yeah. sometimes. And if it worked out, you can actually get the three grants together. You can apply for the three different grants at the one time. The only thing you can do is apply for the same grant twice in the same year, but you can actually apply. Sometimes we would give the double grants based on what your needs and what we have to do to the house. But you can apply for the three of them. Don't be here a bit worried. The girls in the office will only love to talk to you if you're concerned about, I'm afraid I might apply for the wrong grant. 
if you apply for the wrong grant and I or my colleagues call out, we won't be long getting a change to suit you. We are here for you, not for us. You know, county manager probably won't like me saying that, but that's, that's, that's what we see our job, you know. Because these grants, we spend uh, over three million every year on these grants. Sounds a lot of money, but that's for the whole of Tipperary. But how much does it cost to keep someone in residential care? For a week, for a month, for a year? These will keep them at home. We would love if it was doubled, love if it was trebled, you know, so. So you do, you do what you can to make life as easy as possible for people. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, I suppose your top advice is what to people? Come into you? The best advice I can give is if you think you have a need, apply for the application form, have a read. Then you can ring the girls in the grant department in Nina. But now you have it narrowed down your, your request for information and they will look after you. Only glad to inform you exactly what you want. And again, don't worry if you get it wrong. We'll sort. There's no black, it's not an exam. There's no black or white. But it's vital, you have, it's vital, vital that you fill the form in full. Because if there's anything missing, the girls will have to send it back out to you. Their hands are tied. Because with the people coming in, I'll give you this this week, and next week I'll send you one another bit, and the week after, they'll have to keep sending it back out to them. It's unfortunate, but you know, they have to run a system. Yeah, and I suppose we actually met the volunteers uh, as part of this as well, and I suppose maybe you can get someone to sit down and, and help you fill out the pieces and then get on to you about it's it. There's actually a part on the form exactly for that. I can be a friend, I can be a family member, I can actually be a counsellor. And we can, if, if you're a bit worried about me coming out, you can have that person there when I do come out and we'll go through them. So again, we would advise someone, if you're a little bit worried from a technical point of view or whatever, have your friend appointed. They'll have their phone number on the form. If you want, we can contact them first before I go to you. That's brilliant. It's, it's a great, and that can be your counsellor. A lot of the counsellors now are even the TDs. They have their constituency office and they're very good girls in that. And they are as good as us nearly. So go in and talk to them if you have to. That's what they're here for. But no, you, you, you are entitled to have a nominated person to help you. And that puts, again, people's mind at rest. It does, of course, yeah. Don't, don't ever worry. And if you fill the form and send it in and you said, oh, mother of God, I should have stuck in this, or so, ring the office, it'll be added to it. Your doctor will prioritise or your OT will prioritise. You know, it's priority one, two or three or an emergency. You may be prioritised as a two, and unfortunately that puts you down on the list of things. But in the meantime, sadly, your condition may change, it may get worse. Get the new information into us and it, it can be changed. That's not a problem. There's income, obviously there's income complications. In. Again, from the time you send in your form to the time this is being processed, there may be a change and that. Get that information into us. There's nothing in, in concrete, you know, until the job is done. Another vital part is people are concerned, well, I run myself into financial trouble. The important thing is you don't do any work until the grant has been allocated to you. You will be told exactly how much you're getting before there's a thing done. So, because in some cases you may have a financial contribution yourself to add to it. But before you do anything, you know. It's there in black and white. I should add in, I don't want to complicate it too much, but if you're getting an extension, for example, especially a bedroom, you may need planning permission or you may need a letter of exemption from planning. We will need that. So generally we would advise get a competent person to do a set of drawings for you. They will do for the planning office then if you need planning or need a letter of exemption. And when the, when the works are completed, we will need that competent person to sign off on it because we do not supervise. Okay. You know, we can call halfway through it if there's a need for a payment or whatever, but we do not supervise. So you will need to have someone competent to look after that for you. Okay, so there's a really clear process on how to do it. There is. How there to is. apply for it. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing here, there's a lot of protection within it. There's a, a good, yeah. Information, information, information. But to the team in Nina, the girls, and to ourselves, as we call out, either the lads from San Mel or, the, or myself or Padre from Nina, give us what information you can. Don't, if you're embarrassed, you, we're not looking for details. Just keep it general. But tell us everything you can. It helps us making the decision. 
we will probably get more information by looking around at what people are not saying, read between the lines of what they do say, but it helps. It's your case, you know. That's been so informative. I really appreciate you giving your time and your experience today. No problem. Thank you very much.